well we're here we're finally at the point I'm a little nervous the time according to my submarine clock is 20 about 20 till 6 it's the 22nd of July and I'm ready to go ready to go I think up in the head you've got a bicycle you got a pile of uh, fenders and you got a pile of ropes Mostly they're stuffing each other to help each other stay together, you know, tight. <sighs> I have the bed over here demobilized. There's now storage again. If there's any sleeping inside, that's where it'll be. More than likely, I'll be sleeping over here in the starboard side settee when we get underway. Um, so, all I'm going to do now is grab a little bit of food and then go and then we'll just see what <laughs> fate has planned for me I've done everything I can think of to be ready <sighs> I think I'm ready we'll just see though could be maybe I'll be getting towed back here with a failed engine in an hour maybe I'll be anchoring out because of some other issue and coming back tomorrow I don't know but I think I'm going to get out about 10 miles off the coast and I'm going to head south with the uh, northerly winds that are predicted for the night and head south as fast as I can go. No one have to sleep. I'll ease sail and uh, reduce sail and hit some rack time. So let's go do this. Alright, take care. You too. Oh my god. Yeah, all right. Left. I left. Okay, we're on the way. Let's go. chart of the uh, Tampa Bay. The trip started right here of the St. Pete Municipal Marina. I came out this way, hung a right, and pretty much went straight south, okay? Then you can see I did a dog leg to the right, another one to the right, to get on the shipping channel right under the main Sunshine Skyway Bridge right there. And then I just continued in the ship channel. Rather, I, I used I followed the ship channel, but I was just about 100 meters, maybe 200 meters outside the channel, right where the green line shows. You can see they call it Mullet Key Channel. I was just outside that, and I used the same markers to keep me out of the shallow waters. And I just stayed in that, and it took forever. Okay? For scale, everybody, this is, this is, this this distance here is three miles, okay? That's about a three mile trip, so. Hey dude, hang on. Yeah, good man, uh, um, pardon, oh, yeah. hang on a sec. Yeah, so. Nope, 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 uh, oh no, momento, uh, Eduardo. Yeah, then I cleared the uh, Egmont channel and hung left. This is the main ship channel, which continues out to the deep blue sea, but I was shallow enough draft that I cut the corner and headed out. Alrighty, so a little sailing or voyage strategy here. That's the Tampa Bay. Okay. We left that area, left the dock right about there at 6 p.m. and did the transit out the channel and it got to here. This is where we were at 5 a.m. It's now a little after 6. I'm expecting to get to about here in the next, by lunchtime, next four or five hours. And at that point, I think, if I can maintain this track, man, that is about as perfect as it gets, and I don't have to do anything. Um, but right now, my heading is 240, so I think I'm actually heading this way. And that's not perfect. The boat is behaving perfectly, but the problem is the wind model showed that this area is likely to get becalmed tomorrow, so it'd be best if I could get south further as opposed to west further 
So I'd love to maintain a course of 210, but the boat's just not happy there with the current sails up. So my goal today is to get to about here after another 24 hours. Um, that way, when if I get becalmed, you know, the, the calm weather will affect further north. I might be able to keep some uh, easterly trade winds coming if I move the camera here. Yeah, so I, I think that you're more likely to keep easterly winds down here south of the Florida Keys. So if I can get as close as I can to that area and make it about this far in another 24 hours, that would be a good thing. But we just don't know. It's very possible I'm going to get becalmed and I'll just slowly sit here and drift, which is fine too. Then the drifting direction is this way, <laughs> so I'll just get pushed and I'll catch up on sleep, stuff like that until the winds pick up and then I should pick up some easterly winds here and then I'll make it into the Yucatan Passage. better than looking at the real chart right so this is where I started in the Tampa Bay area St. Petersburg technically that's Egmont Key where the light is and I hung that left as I told you and this is a track that I made good that's the end of day one the 23rd Devin's birthday happy birthday Devin the end of day two and then it gets a little more problematic when I get down here I spent the better part of I think two and a half days here trying to make it out of the Gulf of Mexico and get this way and it got more difficult. They... Well we're not here to pretend that life is all sunshine and unicorns are we? It went pretty well the first couple of days um, and I am very happy for that but I, we need to talk about the loop currents that are present in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see it right there and here's a different view of all the different statistical loop currents that have existed. So you can see from this gra graph here on day two and three, I was in the center of the picture and I was getting pushed hard to the east and south. Later, to my last couple of days, you can see the water gushing north through the Yucatan Strait. Gushing, I mean, about five knots in the center of that channel. Uh, so that water is really moving pretty hard to the north in the Yucatan Strait. Sunday afternoon around 5 p.m. The Gulf is a bit rolly again not like yesterday oh my god yesterday was awful and the wind completely died and we spent all night I just heaved to and we spent all night just rolling without mercy but I, when you're tired enough you sleep through anything what we're looking at in front of us is a lot of thunder clouds I can hear them rumbling but we're going right through them I think I don't I'm happy with this heading run. I don't want to change. Oh boy. 
So, just came down from topside. <clears throat> what you'll see is the mainsail's up, albeit with only with two reefs in. The little red lines are holding a bundle of the fabric, preventing it from going further up. So the main is not fully deployed, and that's only because I'm scared yet. When I left the dock, I had two reefs tied in the uh, sail, and the first day I tried to put up the mainsail, and then I hurriedly, and I let go of the second reef down to one reef, and then I hurriedly put back in the second reef. That's why it's not very tidy looking right there. But that's just uh, appearance. It doesn't affect performance at all. And I'm not even sure if my speed has gone up one tenth of a knot when I put this up. I had been sailing only on the head sail, but I do think it has made the boat more balanced and easier for Otto to steer. Otto has been working like a champ today. Very happy with him today because I could not have spent 45 minutes up here on deck dealing with all the stuff that must be dealt with if I'm back on the wheel, right? You just can't do it all. So, so now I'm just going to tidy up some of the lines so that if I do have to go up there, I don't get tripped up or hung up on anything. So, all good. Making progress, slow, but sure. Well, hell, I'm not sure. <laughs> Had some dolphins come by and visit me earlier. I always take that as a sign of good luck, but then again, they could have been just checking out what's for dinner later. <laughs> Maybe they heard it's me. Hey, he'll be sunk in an hour. <laughs> it is a gorgeous day. I, uh, I didn't get the camera out for the squalls this morning, but you know, around five o'clock, I got hit by a couple of, not vicious, but you know, squalls where you get high winds, then you get the rain, then you get about 30 minutes of steady rain without the winds and then it clears up and then you kind of restore everything to normal and then you get hit by another one so what are you going to do? That's normal. But now I'm just going to have some food I think. But I always stop to appreciate the moment. So already today I've been through a storm, got to see the dolphins and the, you know, swimming by the boat, say hello, and I'm sailing, heading for the tropics, just like I've always wanted. It's a bit rolly, you can see me rolling around here, the swells are nothing, you know, you can see them rolling in here, you know. and there's nothing really to cry about, it makes it harder to cook and everything because a boat is generally running parallel to these swells and so I'm gonna experiment with a new heading to see if I can get a little further south than I'm going but that's part of the deal too. Not anybody else out here. Last night I had some traffic and a couple other contacts uh, that I saw visually they did not show up on AIS but that's the way it is. One of them, I never figured out what it was close to. It wasn't even moving. I, I didn't hit him or anything, but yeah. Oh my god. Well, about four hours ago, I was chortling to myself about how effectively I got the sails balanced such that uh, I could lock the rudder in midships and took naps and read a book and all that stuff. My God, you know, <laughs> I was ready to quit today. If someone came up with a helicopter and says, hey, 50 bucks for your boat, I'd say, I'll take it. You know? Oh my God, maybe this is just too damn much work. I don't know. The seas are very, very rolly. The wind is fickle. I had the main up, playing with it, and I just could not get any sweet spot for this boat to sail because I want to go south and west and that's not really possible to do um, not right now the winds decided to go from north to being out of the west so I could try beating into the wind but it was 
between the main and the Genoa, I just, I tried various reefing combinations and here we are heaving fucking two. God fucking damn it. God fuck. You know, so I think just being becalmed with no wind at all in the water flat like this uh, would be no problem. I think most sailors would actually appreciate a day or so <laughs> to just rest and sleep. Cook, clean, you can kind of tidy up your house and and just enjoy a peaceful, quiet day. But, but in my case, on this past, on this, but on this trip, by day three and four primarily, it was the winds were fickle, and that I had no wind in general. But if I was a squall, I would usually get wind associated with the squall. So, for instance, I see a squall coming, I almost looked forward to it because I knew for about 20 minutes before the rain hit, you would get pretty good winds. You can never really predict what direction it's going to be, but you get winds and you can move for about 20, 30 minutes, and then the wind stops again and it rains, and then sometimes the wind blew for another hour and then it would stop again. And that in itself I can live with, <clears throat> but the fact that it was also just very, very rolly in that part of the Gulf of Mexico, like, oh my god, that. So the combination of not being able to control the boat and it's heading because there's no wind. And all you are is like a cork on the top of the water that's floating around and you can get involved and every time the boat comes to the top of a crest the boat tends to twist and run down the crest, uh, the crest. so you you're always turning but you can't control the boat if you don't have wind and that after day two gets pretty damn old so you doing auto bridge i'm not great Got some visitors here. Damn, I sure needed it. Because busy and tiring couple of days, it's very easy to get discouraged. You know? Very easy to get discouraged. Hey guys! Hey guys! Girls! How we doing? Good to see ya. Thank you! Thank you! Put in a good word for me with King Neptune, please. Okay, so I'm at the back of the chart table. Um, it's just too dark outside to take any pictures. Okay, so my heart's uh, beating again. Uh, the, the guy, uh, that other ship, it didn't do anything unreasonable. It behaved seaman-like and it did all the right stuff, but still not something you want to see when your CPA alarm is telling you, and, and I saw the guy miles and miles out there, his CPA was showing at originally 0 0.1 nautical mile and it was that's when it was still 32 minutes away so I had time and I was thinking what's the right way to play it and my best sailing solution was to cross his bow and get clear of heading for my target which is Isla Mujeres I could have stayed in my old my old course but I could, I could have gone faster and I'd have been downwind of him you know that would have been probably better from that perspective so yeah, you kind of make the best call you can, but at one point I'm looking at his red and green coming right at me and I, wow. You know, so I just, you know, was very thankful that the winds held their own because if the winds had died right when I'm right in front of the guy, I'd had to use a diesel and just drive the hell out of it and clear the area. That would have been the answer, so. Okay, I'm gonna take another look around and maybe close my eyes for 20 minutes. Well. That's what 2.7 nautical miles looks like. It's going pretty fast. I can see a big white bow wave. And that would hurt if he hit me. So I'm glad he's going that way and I'm going another way. We're past our CPA.
point seven. What the fuck was that? Okay, so point seven nautical miles. That's his stuff. That's where his antennas are. That's what a type of cargo ship, all types. Destination USA Jax. And that's him. And this is. And his CPA is 8 tenths of a nautical mile in 13 minutes. Damn thing is, this alarm just won't stop going off. It's so cranky. So, Simrad is a manufacturer of this damn thing. Yeah, it's handy sometimes. What a pain in the ass, the whole thing. Alright, so the flashing light means it's on standby. And when you mash the red button, um, then it's supposed to maintain an automatic whatever helm heading you had at the time you press the button. Now granted, you should be more or less steady on the course and you should be asking it to perform you know, changes that it can handle. Um, and I was. I, I gave the, the thing a nudge and I got to a new heading and I pressed the automatic button and it immediately altered course third more degree support, which was directly into the wind which directly stopped my progress while I was in front of that big MF. It's like, so simple. It makes me less safe sometimes. And that auto tiller makes me more safe when it allows me to, to sleep. So if I get perfect, happy conditions, then I can maybe get some rest. And the, the auto tiller does allow that, I, I, I admit. I'm not here to be bitchy moaning, but god damn, that thing. That auto tiller. It's the thing I curse at the most on the boat, that's for sure. I haven't cursed at anything else. Except myself, and the wind, and the weather. You know, and the lack of wind when I was stuck in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know if I'm technically still in the Gulf of Mexico or not. I call myself at the, the uh, Yucatan Strait. The passage, so. I didn't expect to see a lot of merchant cargo coming that way. He's on heading of 083, supposedly headed for Jacksonville. Well, that doesn't really compute, I guess. He's going to get on my reciprocal course, I suppose, and jump on the Gulf Stream and head up the East Coast to Jacksonville, Florida. I guess that's what he's going to do. The shipping company guys, and they're not dummies. You know, they know if you want to save fuel, get on the Gulf Stream if you're going that way. The opposite to the Gulf Stream here is the Yucatan, Yucatan um, Passage. It has a northerly moving current in a certain points, right at the choke point in the center. It's about five knots. Kind of like the Gulf Stream right off the coast of Miami. You got to know where it's at and you got to prepare for it on your trip. And I'm expecting to get hit by it as well. But I'm, I'm not at the choke point. That's about 100 miles south of me. 60 miles south. So I'm in a wider portion that's because I'm crossing it up. And I don't think I'm getting his up too much. Anyway, it's not a day for bitchy bitchy. I'm thankful. I mean, we were bitching this morning. You should have heard me cursing this morning. <laughs> Weather. I had winds well into the evening. Boredom, when the winds are light and you really can't sail well, makes you do a couple things. Decide to cook eggs, which is not a bad thing, but you also decide to do it while you're directly uphill from this guy. Hard to see him, I know. Ship on the horizon, I'm right in front of his bow. In fact, I just saw another puff of smoke. I don't know if they're starting engines or what, but they get into the port. Damn it, we never make sense. I'm going 
faster sideways than forward. <laughs> now, I gotta correct that soon. But everything is so happy, the sails are happy, but if I go left, I won't be able to sail anymore because I'm as far left, of course. Whatever. So what things have I learned? Well, I think sitting here, I'm kind of tired, I've been kind of loopy. And you could just pick a category and I'll say, shoot, I don't know, there's a lot of things. Bottom line is, I, I kind of like it, you know. I don't know that I would want to be at sea alone all the time. I think plays mess with my mind. I actually think I hear voices sometimes. I swear, if there's noises you hear in the sea or coming from the boat, and I swear it sounds like people saying something. Just a word like, hey, this or that. You know, little words, and I think it's amazing. Seven days at sea. I'm excited about the process because I've never actually cleared customs in this manner before. So I'm interested to see what happens and I'm sure they'll tell me a list of things that I've done wrong. Whatever. I tried to call them on the VHF radio and there is no reply because I think there's a language barrier. My Spanish and him suck. But for the moment, I'm just uh, navigating there. Let me show you. The basic plan is for me to run down this line of uh, longitude, which is uh, 86, 40 west, 40 minutes west. I'm um, just a wee bit to the east of it because of currents. When I get to this marker, which is approximately 21 minutes north, 21 degrees, 21 minutes, then I'm going to hang a, a right until I intersect that line of latitude and drive that right in. That's the basic plan. If I had a chart plotter, I'd just follow this line all the way in, but I don't have one. And you can't tell much by looking sometimes whether you're coming in at this angle or this angle, and it can make a difference. But I am sure that coming in at 18 minutes north is a safe latitude. Safe, and that's okay. That's why I have a safe line written here. So, to remind me, if I just get on that line and get inside of there, then all the problems get much simpler. But let's get this thing there. Let's go. I can see it from here. That's like a good six miles out though. <laughs> Long trip. And when that, when that quarantine flag comes down, that means your voyage is completely over. And, and it is for me. <sighs> so, I'm going to put a lessons learned video out separate for, to this. I know this video is long enough as it is. Uh, specific things that I learned that I would do differently going forward or things that I had forgotten to take with me that I wished I had or 
new things I think I really want to get. <clears throat> well, really, I haven't processed all that yet, and I, I don't want to sit here and spend three weeks trying to process a perfect video. I'd rather, you know, be more genuine and, 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 yep, and just uh, let you know, you know, what happened and that I'm here. So I don't even know the next plans. So, except I'm not staying here because of this boat traffic. <laughs> it's like being in Key Largo on a holiday weekend. <coughs> so, certainly there were highs and lows. But there were days when it was perfect and absolutely ideal, and I could not have asked for anything better. And there were days when I was frustrated by the weather <coughs> because, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, the, when the when there's no wind and the boat's twisting and rolling with heavy rolls, the auto tower can't do its job. When you have a sail combination and a wind combination set up, even if you have steady wind, if you have excessive weather helm on the boat, the auto helm, auto tiller really can't manage that either unless you kind of trick it and help it. And I found a way to get through that. So the auto tiller and I have a love-hate relationship right now. Very helpful because I was able to sleep, you know, and it did help. You know, there were times I could sleep and go make a sandwich and things like that, and it, it did help. Yeah, the big new process for me that I learned was the immigration into this country was very difficult. Oh my God, if they treated all tourists like this at airports, nobody would ever come visit Mexico. But it took every bit of a full day. You know, and that, not, that doesn't include the day I was rejected. So I got here and was rejected by the port captain. And so the next day I had to go to an agent to get checked in. <clears throat> but it's not checking in with one person. You have to check in with four completely separate entities and each one has their own representative. You got sanitation, you got immigration, you got customs, and you've got agriculture. Each individual is a perfectly nice person, but if it weren't for an agent, you would, I would never have gotten that done, and I'd still be flying the quarantine flag. So that's, that's something for me to kind of process. I learned a bit more about paper and things like that that I should have had. I had everything except one thing, and, but I was able to get it. A document I have in my computer, so I'll, I'll, that'll, that'll be my lessons learned. So, enough said. So I'm here in Ala Mujeres. Again, it's a vacation spot, it's a touristy spot. Not really my cup of tea, but it's dry land and it's, you know, there's some good folks here and I'm going to move the boat today to a different little marina. I didn't want to spend a week at Anchor because I need to be busy with Wi-Fi. I need to find a, a place to put the boat for a little bit longer stay because I've got a bit of a mission in my hands. So. But until now, take care, everybody. Enjoy, and I, I hope you all stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.